Weapon art is overloaded. Judging by our station, this field has become very popular. A few years ago, it was mainly cool props and environments. But now it's almost impossible to find a trend without at least a couple of good weapons. Sometimes the entire area is dominated by military stuff. But what is hiding behind a bunch of likes and comments under every post? In reality, people even in the top search do not always have a job. And if you look at less popular weapon artists, the situation becomes depressing. The answer is extremely simple. The niche is heavily overloaded. In the normal world, there is a shortage of specialists in narrow areas. And for those who entered such niche, this is actually a big plus. Due to lack of specialists, salary will be noticeable higher than average in the industry. I cannot say from my personal experience, but information that I have. Hair artists are doing very well now. Perhaps after a super course appears or a new school graduates a lot of students, then this type of art will find himself in a situation similar to that of weapon artist. But even under these conditions, there is one extremely imp important aspect. Why did this happen with this direction and not, for example, with environment art? Culture. Weapons are popular far beyond gaming industry. It is an important element of cinema as well giant communities around the world studying everything related to weapons in details. Based on this premise, weapons become popular. And then we have several technical factors for its vectoring. There was a relatively low entire barrier level. If take a props as a starting point for entering the industry, then this art has not gone far from it. As a result, we have a huge number of people who can create this type of art. Then the level of art is rising rapidly. This can be seen in if you start paying attention to how weapons, weapons are implemented in games. Therefore, requirements for artists increase. Don't forget about customization and personalization systems. And we are having one of the most complex art system in games. And at this point, a paradox begins. On the one hand, we have a large number of well-executed projects. On the other hand, expectations are extremely high. Now we have a problem for a fresh weapon artist to cross this threshold for getting paid job. Let's think about how we can solve this problem. The short answer? It's not enough to just have a good base. You know you need to stand out. To our great fortune, we have several courses that can help us learn industry standards. Not everything that looks beautiful at first glance is actually so. It is extremely important to learn how to analyze project and especially to do it as a specialist, as a professional. Let's take a closer look at material that can really help us. The most important tutorial for me is the Gaze Petrol handgun tutorial. If each of your unique project will look at this level, your chances of getting a job will be high enough. The only point that I'd like to mention, in this tutorial the author used a spec gloss pipeline for texturing. It is a less common pipeline, but you will be able to also apply this knowledge for metal rough as well. Usually, one project is not enough to consolidate knowledge. But we are also lucky that this is not the only material available for this direction. Our station learning and Decagon are also good resources to explore. Alex Milini describes his pipeline and, and it's quite interesting. I also took a couple things from there and started trying to make even more procedural foundation for my projects. However, I still know that I personally refuse to use this make directly in Blender. Yes, excluding the brush reduced the number of steps and transition between softwares, which is a big plus and potentially a significant increase in speed. But the problem is that this modifier works extremely slow. Blender handles large number of polygons in sync poorly overall especially compared to ZBrush. During my test, I began experiencing difficulties and lags on the first object already. It looks almost impossible for me to use this pipeline for any complex projects. Perhaps my hardware has simply become hopelessly outdated. Unfortunately, this course covers only stages of working with geometry and does not cover the texture stage at all. Fortunately, there is a good material on AT level website that explains the texturing approach. This article of one more K project. It has an essential advantage. The author talks not so much about the process of working with texture, but about 
analyzing references and related topics, which is just a super basis for making really unique looking weapons. I would also note the following tutorial, Simon Fuchs with his handgun tutorial. I haven't watched this tutorial yet, my colleagues who have studied this material spoke very positively about it, and their results speak for themselves. Perhaps I will complete this tutorial, and then I promise to record a detailed video with my impressions. After completing these tutorials, you will have a general idea of industry standards. Now you can compare your result, for example, on our station with the works of other artists. Having this knowledge will help you to understand in details what has been done really well and which elements need improvement. Simply completing these tutorials won't make you competitive enough. To try to put together a strong portfolio, you will need to release several more unique projects using all the new skills. And quality of work should be at least no lower than that achieved in these courses, ideally containing even more unique details. Good luck on this challenging path. Below, I left all links to the materials that shown in this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found something interesting for yourself. Subscribe and see you in next videos.